If you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide on how to purchase, install, activate, and use an Airlow eSIM, you're on the right channel, but I recommend you start with this video where I walk through everything you need to get started with an Airlow eSIM. In this video, I'll be answering in depth the most frequently asked questions I got on that video in hopes that it makes you feel even more confident in being able to use an Airlow eSIM during your travels. Okay, let's answer some questions. How far in advance can you purchase an eSIM? The vast majority of Airlow's eSIMs don't actually activate until you arrive at your destination and your phone has had the ability to connect to one of the networks covered under your Airlow eSIM plan. That said, there's really no limit as to how far in advance you can purchase an eSIM prior to your trip. The most recent one I purchased was the European Regional eSIM, which I bought about a month ahead of my trip and I had absolutely no issues whatsoever with it activating too early. My recommendation if you'd like to get ahead a little bit and purchase your eSIM ahead of your trip is to check the activation policy. To do that, go ahead and open Airlow and then find the eSIM you want to use, I'm just going to click Spain. And just for the sake of example, I'm going to click on this top one. And then if I go ahead and scroll down here under this additional information section, click show more, the activation policy. So the validity period starts when the eSIM connects to any supported networks. If it says this, that means your eSIM is not going to activate until you arrive at your destination and your phone has had the opportunity to make connection with one of the networks that you're buying the eSIM for. So in this case, the Movistar or Movistar network in Spain, once your phone has connected to that network, Network, which is local to Spain, then your activation policy will start for the eSIM that you purchased. How much data should you buy? The answer to this obviously depends on your particular situation and a number of factors, but I will say two things. The first is that no matter how much data you start with, you can always add more if you start to run out without having to go through the entire installation process again. In the Aerolo app, these are called top-up options, which essentially is just refilling your data. You can see under my eSIMs, I'm gonna click into my Eurolink plan that I currently have. If I scroll down here, I can see these buy top-up packages. So I can add another gig of data for five bucks, another three gigs for 13 bucks and so forth. And I can see beneath the dollar amount how long it's going to be valid for as well. So seven days, 30 days and so forth. The second thing is if you want a ballpark estimate of how much data you are currently using in your day-to-day -day life, you can go into the settings app click cellular and then you can see right now mine says cellular data for Verizon that's my primary sim card I can see how much data I've used in the current period and I'm not going to show the exact numbers for all these apps because it's kind of embarrassing for some of them but if I scroll down to the bottom I can hit reset statistics right here and what that does is now you can see that my current period has gone to zero kilobytes so it's been reset completely the way this could be helpful is let's say you're going to be gone on a one week trip you could reset this and then after seven days see how much data you've used and then use that as an estimate of how much you'll need to buy on the Aerolo eSIM app for your travels. Now keep in mind that your cell phone usage during your travels is probably going to be a little bit different than it is when you're at home. So take this number with a grain of salt, but at least it gives you kind of a ballpark estimate of how much data your phone is using in the same period of time that your trip is going to be for. What happens when you use up all of your data? As you get close to using all the data on your eSIM, Aerolo will start to send you push notifications letting you know that you're getting low and asking if you want to buy more. If you want to see exactly how much you have left, you can go into the Aerolo app, click on my eSIMs at the bottom, click the eSIM you're using. I'm clicking on my Eurolink one and you can see this usage section here and that shows you how many gigabytes of data you have remaining. So this can be helpful to you while you're thinking through, do I need more data on this trip or will this amount that's left be enough? If you think you will need more data, that's when you can scroll down here and buy top up packages. This is adding more data to your existing plan. You don't have to buy a whole new eSIM. You don't have to go through the installation process again. You're just refilling your current eSIM. Once you purchase one of these top up packages, Aerolo will continue to use the remainder of the data that you initially bought before going into that top-up package and using that new data. Do I still need to purchase an international phone plan with my home service provider? No, you do not. In fact, that is what purchasing an Aerolo eSIM is essentially trying to help you avoid. Some cell providers have decent international offerings, although in my experience, I've found that these international charges tend to add up really quick. Now you might say, well, what about having the ability to place phone calls and sending SMS text messages? Most Aerolo plans only cover data. It's a completely fair question. However, not only are there a ton of workarounds for communicating using data-only apps, which I'll touch on later in this video, but Aerolo is actually now offering a global eSIM, which includes a global phone number that you can use to send some SMS text messages and place these regular phone calls. At the time of making this video, I'm currently testing out that new global eSIM and will be making a video reporting my findings, which once available, I'll put somewhere up here and also in the description of this video. If you go on another trip to a 
country or region that you've purchased an eSIM for previously, do you have to purchase a new eSIM on this next trip or can you use the top up option? You can do either and there's actually not a cost difference between the two. I find that the top up option is easier because you don't have to go through the whole installation process again. So you could go to my eSIMs on the Aerolo app, find the eSIM for the country or region that you've used prior and you wanna use again, go ahead and click on it. And assuming it's still installed, you can come down here to the buy top up packages area and purchase the amount of data that you want for this upcoming trip. The one caveat to this option is that the eSIM that you are choosing to top up must be an eSIM that only activates upon arrival to your destination. The way you can check that is by double checking the eSIM's activation policy. So in my Eurolink one, for example, if I come back up here to the top and I click show more, I can see the activation policy says the validity period starts when the eSIM connects to any supported networks, meaning that I have to actually arrive to the country or region which this eSIM is for. My phone has to connect to one of the available networks in the eSIM package in order for the plan to fully activate and begin using my data and using my time limit on the eSIM. For example, this eSIM that I'm in right now is the one I used on my previous trip earlier this year, but I'm going to be using it again next month. Month. If I scroll down here, you can see under my packages, just for example, I bought a one gigabyte data plan. So even though the eSIM is installed and I bought this one gigabyte data plan, because this is an eSIM that doesn't activate until I arrive at my destination, this one gigabyte of data won't start being used until I arrive back in Europe. Also, in my case, I still have this eSIM installed on my phone. I never uninstalled it. If you find yourself in a similar situation and you want to check and see if you have your eSIM still installed, you would simply go into the settings app and under cellular, you would see the sims here and this is where you can see if your eSIM is still installed on your phone if when you finished your trip previously you didn't manually go in here and remove the eSIM you used before it should still be in here the only other reason you might not see your previously purchased eSIM in the sims section is if maybe you upgraded your phone since going on that trip in that case you would want to go into the Airlo app and buy a brand new eSIM and install that one otherwise I recommend the top-up option do you need a Wi-Fi connection to finish enabling and activating your eSIM once you arrive at your destination. If your eSIM is already installed on the phone, you do not need a connection to Wi-Fi in order for it to be enabled and activated upon arriving at your destination. All you'll need to do is go into the settings app, scroll down to cellular, and then under this SIM section, you would go into your eSIM. For me, it's this Aerolo Europe one that I've custom named. Tap on that, and then you would switch on the turn on this line. Now, it may take a few minutes to finish activating, but just know that that is completely normal. If you have yet to purchase and or install your Airlo eSIM, maybe because you're purchasing one that activates upon installation rather than activation, then yes, you will need to be able to connect to a Wi-Fi network when you arrive at your destination to install the eSIM and to activate it. I'll again link my video for the purchase and installation process of an Airlo eSIM somewhere up here so that you can save it for later in case you're trying to figure all this out on the Wi-Fi at an airport or a train station. What should I do if my eSIM gets stuck showing the word activate? or is unable to fully activate after initial installation. This actually happens fairly often and is one of the questions I get asked the most, so don't panic if you get one of these messages. Remember that the vast majority of eSIMs will not and cannot activate until you actually arrive at your destination. So if you've installed the eSIM while still in your home country prior to departing on your trip and you get one of these messages, that makes sense because your phone has not had a chance to connect with one of the supported networks associated with your eSIM plan, which is the trigger that ultimately nudges your phone to finish its activation process. Let's look at a quick example. So if I open Arlo and I pick a random eSIM, let's say Spain, and I'm gonna buy this top one, and I scroll down to additional information and I click show more, the activation policy says the validity period starts when the eSIM connects to any supported networks, which is great news because not only am I able to purchase this ahead of time, but I'm able to install it as well because I know it's not gonna activate while I'm still in my home country. So during my installation process, if I come into the settings app and I go to cellular again, and then I come into sims, if I notice that my new eSIM is stuck saying activating, I know that's fine because for example, for me, I'm still in the United States and I have haven't actually gotten to Spain yet. My phone has not had the ability to connect to one of the supported networks. You're starting to get the point. It can't activate yet. So it's normal that it would say that. Now, once my plane lands in Spain and I turn off airplane mode and come in here back to cellular and I go to Sims and under turn on this line, I switch it on. Within a few minutes, it'll finish its activation process and be ready to use at that point. The short answer is don't panic. This happens to a lot of people. The eSIM will sort itself out once you arrive at your destination. My phone is on the list of eSIM compatible phones, but I cannot add one. Why am I 
might that be? Almost every time someone has asked me this, we were able to find out that the root cause was that their phone was still locked to their carrier. In order to use an eSIM, your phone not only has to be compatible with eSIMs, but it has to be unlocked. To briefly describe what it means for a phone to be locked, that means that your phone can only be used with one specific cell service provider. So for example, in the States, it might be Verizon. An unlocked phone can be used with any cell service provider so that you have the ability to change at any point if you wish. Now, I can't necessarily speak for other countries, but according to the Federal Communications Commission here in the US, if you own your phone completely, in other words, you're not making payments on it anymore, your carrier is legally required to unlock your phone should you request it at no cost to you. Every provider's process can be a little bit different, but for the most part, these requests can be completed through an online form or over the phone. Should I remove my physical SIM card to make sure that I don't incur international roaming charges from my cell provider back home? You can do this if it makes you feel better, but you certainly do not have to, and I personally don't do this or recommend it myself. Mostly because those physical SIM cards are super tiny. If I'm carrying that with me throughout my entire trip, I know there's a pretty good chance I could lose it, in which case, when I get back to the United States and I don't have my physical SIM card for my Verizon plan at home, I'm not gonna be able to use Verizon, which is gonna be inconvenient as soon as I get back home and need to request an Uber to get back to my house. I recommend keeping that little SIM card in your phone and just making sure you disable it in the settings of your phone prior to leaving on your trip. So let me show you how to do that. So open up the settings app, go into cellular and under SIMs, you can see my top one here says Verizon. It's my primary SIM card for home. I would just come in here under turn on this line. I would switch this to off and that would be what turns off that SIM card so I'm not using it and incurring roaming charges while I'm abroad. Should data roaming be on or off while using Aerolo? Data roaming should be on for your Aerolo eSIM. Now, why is that? By definition, data roaming permits internet access over a cellular data network when you're in a region not covered by your primary network. It's also a SIM specific setting, meaning that you have the option to turn data roaming on or off her SIM card. So in this case, you have the data roaming option for your primary SIM card and you have a data roaming option for your Aerolo eSIM card. Having data roaming on for your Aerolo eSIM card is what's going to allow that eSIM to rotate through the different networks associated with your eSIM plan, giving you the best possible service based on your physical location at any given time. Now, while you're traveling and using your Aerolo eSIM, your primary SIM is going to be turned off, completely disabling the ability to even switch data roaming on or off. So in other words, you don't even have the option to turn it on or off for that SIM card. Let me show you what I mean. So in the settings app, if I go to cellular, so I have the two SIMs here, one is on, one is off. The one that's on is our Aerolo eSIM and the one that's off is our primary SIM from back home. The one that's on, you can see I have data roaming switched to on. That's good, that's what we want. When I come into the one that's off, you can see that because it's off, I don't even have the option to turn data roaming on or off. And that's because the SIM is disabled, making it impossible for data roaming to even be an option. Can you share data using a hotspot? Yes, you can. In fact, that's how Steph and I travel. We purchase an eSIM on my phone and then she taps into my hotspot when she needs to. Two things to keep in mind if you're gonna be using a hotspot. The first is to remember that in order for somebody to tap into your hotspot, they have to be physically near you. So if there's gonna be any point throughout the trip in which they are going to be physically very far away from you and they either need to communicate back with you or with somebody else, they're not gonna be able to do that. And at that point, they should probably have their own eSIM plan set up. The second thing to keep in mind is that your data is gonna get used up significantly quicker. So you may just need to purchase more data up front on your eSIM plan or know that you're probably gonna have to add more throughout the course of your trip. Does your phone need to be in airplane mode while you're using the Aerolo eSIM? No, in fact, it cannot be in airplane mode in order for your eSIM to work. But let's put my phone in airplane mode. If I come into the settings app and I switch on airplane mode, let's look what happens down here at the cellular section. It says airplane mode. If I click this, cellular data at the top here shows as off. Now, why is that important? Well, if cellular data is switched to off, that means any SIMs you have in here are also going to be disabled temporarily. So in this case, if you have an Aerolo eSIM that you're trying to use and you've turned on airplane mode, which has in turn switched off your cellular data, your Aerolo eSIM will be temporarily disabled and not able to connect to any of the networks that it's supposed to connect you to. Obviously, we don't want that, so what do we do instead? Don't have airplane mode on. Go back into cellular and just make sure that your Aerolo eSIM is switched to on once you arrive at your destination and the primary SIM from back home is switched to off. This will ensure that when your cellular data is on and being used, it's only going to be using the Aerolo eSIM data and not not any data back home with your primary SIM card. Can you still use Wi-Fi? Yes, you can and you should whenever possible. Using Wi-Fi will essentially pause the use of your Aerolo eSIM data, therefore making it last longer. As long as your Wi-Fi is on and you're connected to a network, whether that's at a hotel, an Airbnb, a coffee shop, or an airport, 
Your phone should be using the Wi-Fi's data as opposed to your Airlo's eSIM data. Pro tip for Wi-Fi, try to save as many of your data heavy activities until you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, such as streaming video or placing a video chat call. Can you turn the Airlo eSIM off in order to save data? Yes, you can do this. Our phones naturally use small amounts of data even when we're not using them, especially if you're someone that doesn't fully close out all their apps, or if you have a lot of apps that are using something like your location in the background and constantly refreshing. So if there happens to be any point throughout your travels where you're not going to be using your phone very much and your phone's not going to be connected to a Wi-Fi network, you can come into your phone and just swipe from the top right here and see this little icon that's green. You can click that and that will disable your cellular connections, which includes your Airlo eSIM. When you're ready to use your phone again, go ahead and swipe down from the top right of your phone screen, click that same icon, it'll turn green once more. Within a few seconds, your Airlo eSIM will be able to connect to networks once more and provide you data. Another data saving tip, I mentioned how there could be apps that are constantly refreshing in the background and using small amounts of data. If you want to check and see which ones those are, you can click the settings app and you can scroll all the way down to privacy and security. And then at the top, you'll click that location services. So if I scroll down here, these are all the apps that could potentially use my location and in turn use a little bit of data to do so. The ones that say while using are the apps that are only going to be using data if I have that app open. So that's why it's important to close out of apps if you're not using them. But you can see there's a few of them here that say always. Those are the ones that are going to be using your location constantly. It may be worth coming in here before your trip and checking out some of these ones that say always and clicking on them and changing the allow location access either to never or maybe just to the same as some of the other ones where it says while using the app. That way you don't have as many of the apps running in the background using little bits of your airlow data while you're not even using your phone. Can you still make a call to emergency services while using Airlo? Yes, you can, although you technically don't need any SIMs in your iPhone in order to use the emergency SOS feature. With iPhones, placing the emergency SOS call will contact local emergency services and send your location data to them based on where your phone physically is. So to do this on the iPhone, you push and hold the power button and the top volume button, and you'll see this swipe to call emergency services here. If you swipe that, that's gonna be what contacts the local emergency services in that area. So for example, in the US, it would be 911. In the UK, for example, it would be 999. But again, you don't actually need to have any SIM card in your phone, a physical one or an eSIM in order to use that feature. What should you do with your SIMs once you return home? When you arrive back in your home country, all you need to do is re-enable the SIM card that is associated with your home cell phone service provider. To do that, you'll go into settings, you'll scroll down to cellular. Under SIMs, you'll tap on the SIM card that is affiliated with your plan back home. For me, it's this top one that says Verizon. Yours will probably say something different. I think the default label there, it says primary. Click on that. The turn on this line, it will be switched off and then you will switch it on so that it looks green like this. Once you do that, you're back up and running on your home cell service provider and you're good to go. You can turn off your Airlo eSIM, although it's not really going to matter because whatever data you have left in that plan is just going to expire and then it's just going to sit there. So you can switch it off if it makes you feel better, but you don't need to. How can you call and text with only Airlo data? All right, my most asked question. I'm probably going to explain this in a way that drives the real tech geeks out there absolutely crazy, but explaining in layman's terms is what makes the most sense to me and I'm hoping what makes the most sense to you as well. So technically speaking, you cannot send a traditional SMS text message in the messages app and you cannot place a traditional phone call in the phone app while only using eSIM data. That said, there are still plenty of ways where you can send messages and place calls only using data. For example, when you send a text message to a fellow iPhone or Apple device user and your text bubble turns blue, you're actually sending what's called an iMessage. iMessages are different than traditional SMS text messages and only require data in order to be sent and received. Because Airlo eSIMs provide data, that means you can continue to exchange these iMessages between yourself and other Apple device and iPhone users. Now, there are a couple of things in the settings app of your phone that you're going to want to make sure are configured prior to leaving on your trip. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Let's tap the settings app and then we will scroll down to where it says messages and tap that. The first thing is we're going to want to make sure this iMessage row is switched on which you can see in my phone that it is. The second thing we're gonna wanna do is tap this send and receive row. And you can see in here, there's two different sections and a variety of phone numbers and email addresses are listed. I just have them blurred out for my own privacy. And alongside a couple of them, you'll see some check marks. So this top section says, you can receive iMessages to and reply from. And then for me, I have two different row items checked here. One is my phone number associated with my home cell providers plan. And the other is my email address that is associated with
with my Apple ID. This means that when I go into the messages app and go to send a message, I can send a message either from my phone number or from my email address. All this really does is it uses your email address as a medium to send and receive the message. It's not actually logging into your email account and sending new emails in order to communicate with these people, if that makes any sense. There's probably some technical explanation out there that I probably wouldn't even understand and couldn't expect you to understand if I tried to relay it to you. And then beneath this, you can see start new conversations from. Again, I've got my phone number here and my email address. So when your primary SIM card is disabled, which it will be when you're using Arilo, you're not going to have the option for a phone number in here anymore because that's tied to the SIM card that you've just disabled. So the only options you'll have in here in order to keep using iMessage are any email addresses that you've added to your phone. You'll want to make sure at least one email address is checkmarked in this top section and this bottom section as well. If you don't see any email addresses in here, come out of the messages section, come out of cellular and scroll back to the top. You can tap your name up top here, tap sign in and security. And then there's this email and phone number section up here at the top. You can tap edit and then you can add an email or phone number below. Once you add that email address in there, then you will have it as a selectable option under messages, send and receive. The same logic actually applies to the FaceTime app, which you can use to place video chat calls or voice only calls to other Apple device and iPhone users while only on data. For the setup, you'll do the same thing. You'll tap the settings app. You'll go down until you see FaceTime, which should be right underneath messages. And then you'll have this section here that says you can be reached by FaceTime at and caller ID. This is the same thing. You're going to want to make sure when you're traveling internationally, you're not going to have your phone number as an option here because you'll have turned your primary SIM card off. So you'll want to make sure you have an email address selected so that that can be used as the medium to transmit that voice only call or that video chat call to another Apple device or iPhone user. One helpful little tip for both of these apps, when you contact somebody, it's going to show as coming from that email address rather than coming from your phone number. This can kind of look like spam. So I would let your friends and family know ahead of time before you travel what your email address is if they don't already have it and to know that they will be receiving messages and or calls from that email address so they don't think it's spam. Something that would be helpful for your friends and family to do is to add that email address into their contact for you in their phone so that when you send a message or you place a FaceTime call, it'll show your name rather than your email address. The other nice thing for the messages app is that it'll keep your conversation going in the same thread. Now, what about when you're trying to communicate with somebody who doesn't have an iPhone? Maybe they're an Android user and when you text them, it sends the blasted green text bubble. Those green text bubbles are considered SMS text messages and those do not use data. Since currently the vast majority of Airlo eSIM plans do not come with an allotment for these SMS text messages, they cannot be sent while you're on an Airlo eSIM data plan. However, not only are there plenty of workarounds for this, but Airlo actually just announced a new plan that they're offering, which comes with a global phone number you can use to send a certain amount of SMS text messages and place a certain amount of minutes worth of traditional phone calls. As mentioned earlier, I am in the process of testing out that new global eSIM and will report my findings in a video, which I'll put up here when it's done and in the description below. In the meantime, what I do to communicate with friends and family that maybe have an Android device is I use an app called WhatsApp, as well as sometimes using the Facebook Messenger app. With both of these apps, you're able to send messages, start voice only calls or video chats, and they both only use data, making them compatible for you when you're only using an Airlo eSIM data plan. There are a ton of apps like WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger that accomplish the same exact thing. These are just the two that I use personally and the ones that I can vouch for having used. Whichever of these apps you end up going with, I recommend installing them and getting them set up prior to leaving on your trip to make sure that they're working how they should be. Can you switch your primary line back on while traveling to get texts and calls? Yes, you certainly can do this. Although if you're going to, I would first check with your cell phone service provider at home and find out what their rates are for placing a call, sending and receiving a text and using data while traveling internationally because these rates can be kind of steep. I really only recommend doing this as a last resort as using Airlo is supposed to be a more affordable alternative to paying those steep international charges. Now you might say, well, couldn't I turn my primary line back on and then just switch data roaming to off? As I mentioned earlier, data roaming is a SIM specific setting. So theoretically, if you left your primary line on and turned data roaming off, yes, you would not receive data roaming charges, but you still open yourself up to the possibility of receiving a phone call or receiving a text message, which you in turn maybe charge international rates for by your service provider back home. How can you receive two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication 
authentication without having the ability to receive SMS text messages. This one can be tricky and to be completely honest, I don't have the perfect solution that's gonna work in every single situation, but I do have a couple of tips I can share that have helped me with most of my accounts. For those that might not be familiar with the terminology of two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication, that's essentially when you're trying to log into one of your accounts and the company sends you a text message, for example, that has a six digit code in it that you're then supposed to type into your computer or your phone to finish logging into the account. One solution I found to be helpful is where possible, change your authentication method from text message to either email notification, push notification, or using an authenticator app. My favorite of these methods recently has been to use an authenticator app where available. I find it really convenient to have all of my accounts security codes listed in the same place. And because they refresh every 30 seconds, I feel that this adds an extra layer of security that I don't necessarily get with a text message or an email. Another option you can try is to create a free virtual phone number through an app like Google Voice and then change your phone number in these accounts from your primary cell phone number to this new virtual number. It's hit or miss if this works. There's a lot of financial institutions out there in particular that don't accept a virtual phone number, but it's worth a shot if the account in question only allows a text message or phone call in order to confirm your identity. We are not directly compensated for making videos about Airlo on this channel. However, we do have an affiliate link down in the description that you can use with my code to get a discount on your very first eSIM purchase through Airlo. We do earn a small commission if you purchase an eSIM using that link, which is an easy way to help support the channel if you plan on purchasing one anyway, and we really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and travel safe.